On today's episode of Closing Deals and Heels, I did a solo podcast all about, you know, really understanding what it takes for you to be successful, not just in sales, but possibly in your life, looking at three different areas, looking at skill sets and how to really increase those so that you can be more valuable in the marketplace, as well as, you know, how do you battle that internal game? Sometimes like shit happens, like life happens, things come at you and you get to be the person that decides how you're gonna deal with it and how you're gonna overcome it as fast as possible. And then the last part, I'm gonna save for the episode because this is the one thing that if you learn how to do this, you will always learn how to feel fulfilled while you're growing, while you're developing and never feel like you're unhappy with where you are. I'll see you in the episode. Hello and welcome to another episode of Closing Deals and Heels. I am your host, Kayla Hodges, and today we're going to talk about um, how to not lose your ability to really want to be successful in your life. And typically we focus on sales, which we will go in a little bit today. But one thing that I was asked recently was like, hey, like, how do you not lose your determination? How do you not lose that ability to keep going after what you want? And that's going to come in several different uh, facets. One being possibly when you hit a little bit of success, how do you not get comfortable to wanting more? And then number two, if you're getting a lot of failure and things are not working your way and you're trying, you're trying, you're trying, and you're not seeing the results that you're wanting. I don't know if you've ever felt like that. How do you keep going? How do you keep going? And I think that this really boils down to two aspects of, especially being a woman in, in a sales position or a woman in a business position, your skill level, right? As well as your grit and your mindset and how you are viewing yourself. I, I think that it's at a constant side by side, moving towards one direction together versus looking at only one aspect or the other. And I think that that's different for women versus guys. Like guys, <laughs> I've heard so many um, people that I know that are extremely successful that are like, um, you don't need to wake up and like do your morning routine and you don't need to make sure that you're, you know, <laughs> listening to meditation and doing all the things mindset wise. You just get out of bed and you just go and, and you put in the action and you put in the reps and you just get it done. And as much as I do agree with that, I also think that sometimes as women, we take things a little bit emotionally more than possibly some guys out there. And we have to really understand how to fight this inner game that's inside of us so that we can show up really powerfully on the outside. And that's by never ever losing that hunger, your hunger to want to become more, your hunger to want to learn, your hunger to want to grow, that hunger to want to give, the hunger to want to serve. I heard that from Tony Robbins this morning. I was listening to um, something at the gym and that kind of pattern interrupted me because of course, like I want to have that hunger to grow, to become more, to make more, to be more, to learn, to grow, right? Like aspiring that way. But when he added hunger to give and hunger to serve, it made me take a step back and look at all of this together. What if... Instead of just looking at becoming successful as, hey, I need to develop skills and hey, I need to battle this inner game. I need to make sure I battle this mindset, battle myself, battle my emotions, battle all these things that are coming up. What if it was also possibly this inner drive to give back and an inner drive to want to serve others and want to make a difference in this world? I think that we're all or that we all have gone through like bad things in our life so that we can grow and learn lessons. But I also think that it's possibly so that we can give back and make a difference and be able to help others that, you know, don't have that information yet, don't have that knowledge yet, and to be able to support them as well. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit today of some tools and stuff that you can use to just kind of give yourself um, a reality check really fast. Because I think sometimes we think that we're doing really great, but it's not until we take a big step back and we look at ourselves and we're like, huh, like, am I really on track right now? 
Am I really on track to be able to get what I want? Am I really on track to be happy? Ooh. Or am I trying to give myself audacious goals and trying to tell myself, oh, I can only be happy when? So how do we check ourselves? How do we know whether or not we are okay? How do we know whether or not we are on the road to success? And, you know, success is very, very different from all of us. Maybe your definition for success is very different than mine. Maybe somebody's definition of success is to be a really great mom and that's all they want to do. And I think that that is absolutely incredible because we need people like that. I think that possibly if you wanted your success to be like head of a company, like hell yes, girl, like go after it. Maybe your definition of success is to find the love of your life. Maybe your definition of success is to make X amount of dollars a month, X amount of dollars a year, like whatever it is, that is your desire. And there shouldn't ever be anything wrong with having the desires in your heart and going after the desires there. So if we want to take a step back and look and see if we're on track or off track, we have to get really freaking clear on what the hell we want. And sometimes we think we know what we want and we're going towards one place and then we possibly feel a little lost a little like we're going through the motions, like it's Groundhog Day and we're living the same day over and over and over again. And possibly one day we might get to where we're wanting to go. And I'm telling you that as much as that helps with the grind and and pushing and pushing and pushing, sometimes we do have to take a step back and be like, oh, like is everything I'm doing really getting me towards where I want to go? And am I really clear on where I want to go? So if you're going to just have a moment where you wrote down and you're like, huh, if I always get a picture myself, Kayla Hodges, you say your name, obviously, and it is January 1st, 2024. There's only four months left ish left of this year. Am I really proud of what I've done so far this year? Am I proud of me? If I kept going the way that I'm going every single day, am I going to be proud when I'm standing there that day? What if I take an even bigger step back? I'm like, hmm, where do I want to be in five years? Like, how do I see myself? Like, if I'm going to walk into my home, what does my home look like? Where is it? Where is it in the world? Am I here? Am I somewhere else? Maybe do I possibly have, you know, a, a new kid? right? Is that going to be what my life is like? Am I going to be married? Am I going to, you know, have a bigger place? Am I going to be happy? You know, what is my family dynamic going to look like? What is my dynamic with my friends going to look like? What is my career going to look like? Am I going to be in really good shape? And like, if I could have freaking anything and I could snap my fingers and I'm like, this is exactly what I want. What scene would I like? And if I was just going to pick a scene, what would my Christmas look like? What would, what would my birthday look like? What would my daughter's birthday look like? Like what, what would it be a really, really special moment that I can focus on that I can create in my mind? Maybe it's Thanksgiving and I want to have, you know, the ability to bring in like really, really special decorations and fly my family in and um, have them stay in like a guest house and, and have this really big, amazing event and have my mom there and have her not have to cook for the first time. And like, what would it really look like? And if I get really, really clear on that and like, am I close to making that happen? Like reality check, am I really close to saying, yes, you're on track, that's gonna happen. Like 100%, I have no doubts in my mind or does it possibly feel really far off? And if it feels really far off, like what about me is not willing to get uncomfortable to do the things that are necessary in order to make that happen, okay? So now I'm going back into the two facets here. Number one, my skill level. And then number two, my mindset and my determination and the willingness I have to get over my own shit so that I can move forward to it. So let's look at skill set right now. What skill set would I need in order to make sure that I have the type of cash flow that's coming in that I can do all the things that I need? Okay, if I really looked at it, maybe I need to grow more in X area and Y area. Okay, so if I know I need to grow in those areas to obtain those skills, where could I go? Who can I surround myself with? What can I buy? What can I go through so that I can obtain those skills so that it's not a question, so that I'm not guessing, so that I'm like, I know that I know that I know that this is gonna happen in the next few years because I'm willing to put myself through X, Y, Z. Okay, great. 
that's my plan in place for my skill level. I'm going to go research online. I'm going to find it. I'm going to set the date. I'm going to buy it or I'm going to do whatever I need to be able to buy it. And I put it in my calendar and it's freaking set in stone. And I'm like, this is happening. Great. <laughs> that's aside. Now I'm going to go look at my mindset. And maybe I have thoughts that are coming up. I don't know if you've ever had these thoughts. Oh, Kayla, like you're never going to be able to do that. Or, oh, well, who would come? And, and again, this is all a very hypothetical scenario. I'm just making these up. But what maybe I'm telling myself, I'm, I'm not good enough. Or um, that would take too long. Or maybe that happens for other people, but not for me. Or, oh, are you really thinking that this would happen or this would happen? And I start doubting myself. So like, what the hell do I get to do in order to remove all this chaos that's going on in my head so that I can be really clear and focused and do what I need to do in order to obtain the skills so that I can be more valuable to the marketplace so that I can make more money to be able to do what I want. Okay, so the first thing I get to do is I'm gonna look at who is influencing me negatively. And I had to look at all aspects is people on TikTok influencing me in a bad way? People on Instagram, am I scrolling? Am I watching YouTube videos that don't serve me? Am I watching TV shows that don't serve me? Who is in my office? Who's in my space? Who is capturing my attention and my time? Are they pouring into me? Or are they taking away from me? Do they make me feel like the best version of me? Or do they make me feel less than? And in, am I willing to love myself enough to be the woman that I need to be so that that woman five years from now or the woman in the the picture the dream that I really want can have those things like what sacrifices am I willing to make today in order for that woman to have what she wants because that woman in the future my future version of myself she freaking needs me right now just like she needs you she needs you right now to really look at yourself and to stop tolerating things that you know are not going to get you to where you want to go. And maybe you're like, oh, Kayla, I know, but it's so hard. It's so difficult and blah, blah, blah. And, and trust me, from somebody that has had horrific career choices in my life, horrific relationship choices in my life, like sometimes it's really hard to walk away from things when you have loyalty in place and you care about people and... But it's like, how much do you love yourself in order to go after your dreams? Because no one is going to do it for you. You're the only person that's going to make it happen. And having a willingness to have like a little bit of a cleanse. Maybe you can be with somebody for a day, but you can't be with them for a week. Maybe you can hang out with somebody for an hour, but maybe not a day. It's like, how much do these people influence you? How much do these things influence you? And are you willing to do a cleanse on your life right now in order to go after what you want? So number one is removing things so that you can add. And then number two, it's like, who do you want to be around? Maybe this is time for you to kind of go into your shell and put your head down and go to work. And maybe you just need to be with you right now. And a few close people just to make sure you're on track and that's okay. Maybe it's possibly time for you to start pouring into your mind, um, listening to things that serve you, listening to possibly even this podcast, right? And giving a new perspective on things so that you actually can um, start building up some muscles in your mind, building up some muscles in your heart to be able to know that you're putting good stuff in because whatever you put in comes out. My mom used to tell me as a little girl that you're walking around with a big basket on and every person that you encounter, everything that you watch is like you're putting things in your basket. And whatever you do, whenever you talk to people or you go throughout your day, you're taking things out of your basket. So it's like whatever's being poured into you right now is going to be coming out. And sometimes you don't realize how subtle it is until you realize that you're complacent and you're not happy and the people around you are the same and they're consistently complaining to you or telling you things that don't serve you and then all of a sudden you're acting like that and you wonder what happened another way that you can get over stuff and, and move forward mindset wise is to have a few tools in your tool belt possibly understanding just that even moving your body helps change some stuff like let's say you're having a rough morning you don't want to get things done maybe go on a 10 minute walk while listening to you know, somebody motivational or something that can get you going. I love Eric Thomas. He's great. I always listen to him in the gym. He's a guy that's like, if you want to succeed as bad as you want to breathe, that's when you'll be successful. Oh, and I love him. I love his character and, and how he always is a representation to how he wants his kids to end up like it. It's just so good. And he's always like pouring in my mind in the day. And so when I'm walking around, 
in the morning and I don't want to do anything, sometimes I'm like, oh, it's time to go to the gym, time to make some things happen. Physiology, moving my body is going to help change my mindset. So moving my body, right? Using language, listening to things that are going to pour into you, right? What language is coming out of your mouth? Your words are so freaking powerful. If you keep saying you can't, you keep saying, oh, it's hard. You keep like, it's going to be because you're just reconfirming it in your brain over and over and over again. And lastly, what you're focusing on, and this is the hardest one to get over. Because if I'm focusing on things that piss me off or things that don't serve me, and especially if it's out of my control and I can't do anything about it, I'm going to be in a very depressive, frustrated state versus understanding like how to get myself out of that state, moving my body, focusing on things that serve me, using language that helps. Um, you know, and if I really can't get out of it, I'll put on music and I'll just dance around my house for like five minutes, just like getting it all out of my system so that I can focus on something new because I'm in charge of me. My future me needs me. And so last thing, going back all the way to the beginning where we were talking about serving and giving. I think that so many times we don't realize that right now, maybe a younger version of herself wished you could be you right now. There's somebody out there that has less than you that wishes they can be in your shoes. And sometimes we just take our life for granted. What could you do even today to make a difference in someone's life? Maybe it's just smiling at somebody at a cash register that hasn't had somebody actually pay attention to them in a while. Possibly it is for you to write a note to a friend, send a text message to somebody you care about, letting them know that you care about them. Maybe buying coffee for somebody behind you in a line at a coffee shop. Like there's so many little things that we can do to really make a difference. And if you are in sales, or if you own a business, every single day you have an opportunity to pour into somebody's life. And it's almost your responsibility to show up and put your stuff to side so that you can be there for them. I don't care if you're in B2C, B2B, door to door, B2G, like all sales is is change. And if you have the opportunity to hold space for somebody or for a company and to be able to listen to the problems that they have and help them realize that they need to make a solution and this solution changes the way that they do business or the way that they do something in their lives, like you made a significant difference in their life. You help them change something. It's not about you closing a deal. It's about you giving them an opportunity to realize that they need to make a change. And you as a salesperson or as a business owner get to talk to people all the time. A lot more people than normal people do. You interact with people. Every single person that you run into is just somebody that has a big sign on them that wants to feel important, that wants to feel like they freaking matter. And if you just put yourself aside for one second, and made people feel like they matter. It would change everything for you because you start being in a position of fulfillment, you feeling fulfilled and um, really starts putting you in flow, right? You start attracting the things you want because you're not doing things out of a, a scarcity mindset or out of lack or out of like desperation. You start doing things because you care, doing things because you wanna show up powerfully for other people. So if you wanna be successful, this all goes back to self-control and your willingness to do what it takes. I've never met anybody that's extremely successful that didn't have to work really hard to get there. It's going to take hard work, hard work in terms of action, actions, making things happen, hard work in terms of working on yourself, hard work in terms of like making a difference in people's lives. I don't want you to end up financially successful and be freaking miserable. Like that's not going to help you. If you can learn how to be financially successful and really make a difference in people's lives, you are going to be thriving and you're going to be happy. So if you're going to ask yourself that future version of you, the scene that we created, what the hell does she need from you right now? Who does she need to cut off? Who does she need to make a difference in someone's life? Who can she make a difference for? How does she view herself when she looks in the mirror? How does she talk to herself? Eric Thomas said this the other morning, will the real Eric Thomas please stand up? And he said it to himself. And I'm like, huh, will the real Kayla Hodges please stand up? The real one, not the one that's scared, not the one that's frustrated, not the one that's not getting what she wants right now, not the one that feels like she kind of sometimes fails as a mom, not the one that sometimes feels overwhelmed and freaking tired and like she's going, going, going and everything takes too long. The one that's impatient. No, 
Will the real Kayla Hodges stand up? The one that wants to make a difference, the one that wants to pour into people's lives, the one that really wants to take responsibility, be in the most authentic version of her, be transparent, be vulnerable, be open to see women, to pour into their lives to really make them feel like they're so freaking special and incredible and so worthy of every single thing that they want, which you are so worthy of everything that you want and and to be willing to do whatever the hell it takes to be that woman, to be the example, to pour because it's my responsibility because I know that there's something placed in my heart, like a calling in my heart of what I'm supposed to do. And I think that that is it's the same for for you listening right now. What is placed in your heart? Where are you willing to go? Who are you willing to become? What are you willing to step into? Because the real your name needs to please stand up because she makes a difference. She makes a difference in possibly her kids' lives, the people around her, colleagues, maybe people on Instagram. Like, uh, There's always somebody watching. There's always one person that just needs someone to tell them that, that they got this. I've been on a rant today, but I think it's really, really important. If you want to be successful, get around people that are successful. If you want to be successful, stop being freaking mean to yourself and start developing some skills, 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 skills. You don't get a paid based on how nice you are, how pretty you are. Like that's not how you're paid. You're paid based on the value that you bring to the marketplace. Get skills, work on yourself, do things because you want to make a difference and you'll never be unhappy contribution, helping others, giving, serving, like you're always going to feel fulfilled because you're really making a difference in people's lives. You have every single thing in your side of you to succeed, every single thing inside of you to make it happen. Um, you know, please go on to my YouTube on our lives. We do trainings every week, you know, on sales. I have a really amazing group called Women in Sales on Facebook. And there's, you know, I think like 6,000 people-ish in there. We do trainings every week in there. There's such an amazing community of women that are always pouring into each other, helping each other. Like, if you need the skills, search for them. Happy to support you. If you need someone to just tell you, like, that you're a badass and you got it, like, this is the message. (laughs) This is it. You are it. It is your time. Stop waiting around. Your future you needs you to step the hell up. There's people out there that need you. There's people out there that are waiting for the day that you show up and you make a difference in their life. And I think that that's so powerful if you realize that that is inside of you and take responsibility of that and not give up because you know that it's true. I honor you. I will see you on the next episode. Please make sure that you hit that subscribe button and you hit that notification bell every single time one of these episodes release. I will see you very soon.